when I say I started it on a shoestring and a prayer, I literally, like I did not have the money. I did not have the experience. I did not have the wherewithal or the know-how, but because I put the intention out there, because I was willing to chop wood and carry water, because I was constantly, God, please, God, please, can you walk with me? God, please, can you help me? God, please, can you show me what to do in this situation? Riviera Recovery took off. And in Riviera Recovery, back to your original question, I was mixing up these juices and mixing up these smoothies, mostly for myself, I got to be honest, <laughs> because <laughs> I started to see the miraculous effects of putting super healthy food into my body. It was right around that time that I quit smoking and I began doing fasts and cleanses and juice cleanses and making smoothies in the morning and juices in the afternoon. I started to feel amazing. Well, the clients at Riviera Recovery, they wanted what I was making. So I started giving it to them. And Justin, I started to see nothing shy of miraculous results in the people that I was giving these juices and smoothies to. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, I saw people quit smoking spontaneously. I saw people slowly titrate off of their psych meds through the help of a doctor, not by my advising, but through the help of their doctor. I watch people slowly titrate themselves off of their psych meds. I watch people go from gray and sallow with bad circles under their eyes to looking vibrant and alive. And it was so amazing. And that was where the idea came like, man, if it's helping these people, like it could help a lot of people. So I'm going to open up my own little juice bar. And that was in 2011. And again, absolutely on a shoestring and a prayer. I didn't really have the money. I went to a guy who came from a different type of lifestyle, a lifestyle of gambling and, you know, uh, the type of guy that you would definitely not want to not pay back, <laughs> so to speak, um, a very tough, tough individual. And I was, you know, saying to him, I really want to open up my own juice bar. And he was saying, you know, well, how much is it? And I said, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. And he was like, that's a hand of poker to me. And I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe you could loan me the money. And he did. And I took $55,000 of my own money. I borrowed exactly $208,000 of his money, um, paid him back one year to the day, paid him back one year later, um, and opened up Sun Life Organics in 2011. And again, incredibly naive, didn't have the experience, didn't have the wherewithal, the know-how, um, but because I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I worked hard and I worked hard and I worked hard, we opened up the doors and there was a line out the door and something that I know that you would appreciate about two weeks before we were opening, I was so terrified, Justin. I was absolutely of the mindset because my ego jumped in and my ego was like, what in the F is wrong with you? Why would you do this? Why would you like, there's already a juice bar in this tiny little town. Like, why would you be so crazy to think that you're going to like, no one's going to come and, you know, people still remember you as a drug dealer and a bad guy and no one's going to come here. And like, Justin, it was scary. The day before we opened, we were installing a frozen yogurt machine. Um, I thought, why don't I serve hundred percent certified organic frozen yogurt? We were installing the machine and a couple of kids walked in and that was not uncommon, but you know, my response always was like, sorry guys, we're not open yet, but if you come back tomorrow and these kids walked in and they looked at me and they're like, hi. And I'm like, hi. And I'm looking at them and I'm looking at the machine I had just installed or I didn't install, but the guys had just installed and we were like taste testing the yogurt. And it was amazing. And I was like, Hey, listen, we're not open until tomorrow, but I would love to treat you guys to a, a couple of frozen yogurts. And they're like, Oh my God, thank you so much. They were like high school kids. So they got it. They go outside, Justin, 15 other kids come in behind them. And I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, where are you guys from? And they're like, oh, we're a church group from like Minnesota. And we're here to do a, a singing thing at Pepperdine, like a choir or something like that. 
And I'm like, all right, well, and I just started like handing them out all these frozen yogurts and their like minder, their like, you know, house mom or keeper or whatever comes running in and she's like, guys, no, you know, you can't, don't overwhelm him and you have to pay him. And I'm like, no, 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 it's, it's free. And she's like, no, 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 I insist that we pay you. And I'm like, lady, listen, the register doesn't work yet. The only thing that works is this frozen yogurt machine. So just please, I'm so nervous about opening up tomorrow. I just want to share with you guys. This is like the best part of my day. There was 35 of them. Wow. She, she kept trying to give me money. I kept saying no. The kids are like freaking out. It was a hot, you know, it was a hot day. They're freaking out. They're eating the frozen yogurt. So after I finally get her to calm down and just accept the gift, she goes outside. I'm wiping the sweat off my brow. She comes back in again and I'm like, no. And she goes, no, 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 no. Um, the kids um, have something that they want to tell you. Whew, getting emotional thinking about this. Um, I said, okay. And I walked outside and they started singing hymns. They started singing these beautiful Christian hymns. And that was my sign from God that everything was going to work. And I cried, <laughs> clearly, <laughs> as I'm crying now. I haven't thought about that in a really long time, but these kids had voices like angels. And I fed them because that's what you're supposed to do. And they gave me back what they had, which was their beautiful angelic voices and their Christian hymns of you know praise of God. And it was... It was so like, I froze, I literally froze. And they just kept singing, they kept going. And everybody in that commercial center came out and they all just stood there awestruck with goosebumps, like the hair on the back of their neck standing up because here were these angelic kids delivering this beautiful hymns of, of praise and joy to God. And in that moment, I realized like, I'm okay. It's okay. Everything is okay. God is always with us. We just have to remember to turn to God and we will receive what we are supposed to receive. It doesn't mean that I can close my eyes and go, God, I want a Lamborghini or I want a Ferrari or I want Bitcoin to go back up to 64,000 so I can double my money or whatever. whatever. It, it's not like that. It's that here's a young man turned his life around is creating a place where people can come together and eat healthy food, just like your daughter does, just like your beautiful wife does, just like you do. And I'm, I'm providing something that's good that brings value to people. And in that moment, I knew that I was gonna be okay. Now, in that moment, did I know that there would be 12 locations 10 years later, that I would be living in this beautiful house that we just built in Austin, Texas? No, I didn't know any of that stuff. I just knew that I was going to be okay because I had faith. And the next morning, as we took the cardboard off the windows and my heart is like pounding as I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, this is so crazy. I can't believe we're going to open up. People started to line up. It was about 15 minutes before we were opening. Now here's the crazy part. We didn't advertise. We didn't tell anybody. I mean, I told a few people that were coming in, like we're going to open tomorrow. We're going to open tomorrow. So by time we actually opened the door, there was a line out the door. And that line, if you go to that original location, that line's still there and it's never stopped. And that location does about $2 million a year in revenue. The other location that I have in Malibu also does a little bit over $2 million a year in revenue out of 900 square feet. Now look, the profits are tiny and that's okay. That's okay. Because I didn't do this to get rich. I did it because I felt that it was my purpose. I helped these kids in rehab get healthy and get happy. And I wanted to do that for my friends and for my neighbors and for strangers alike. And so it was a pure intention. It was blessed by God and it continues to grow. And that's the story of some life. Sorry, I got a little emotional. <laughs> <laughs>